Hey guys, me host Super Sorrel, thank you very much for tuning in. So today it's time for another Super Sorrel Super Show podcast, and I'm joined today with Fat Pods, Danny. Hey Danny, how you doing, man? Hello, Super Sorrel, how are you going, man? Oh, good, man. Thank you very much awesome. for joining us today. No, thank you for having me on, I appreciate it, man, I appreciate it. So me and Danny have been chatting offline for a little while now, we've been kind of back and forth about Batman products and B&M and all that kind of good stuff, trying to get all the uh, animated figures and what have you. And uh, we decided to do a bit of a talk today, a podcast, talking about uh, Batman, what figures we grew up with, the Kenner series of Batman, and all the stuff we kind of grew up with. So, um, do you know what, Danny, I'm going to let you lead off, man. So, what kind of figures did you you have when you were growing up with Batman? See, I, again, similar to you, I was born 89, so growing up ages 3, 4, and 5, Batman was everywhere for us as kids. I don't know. We used to have a shop called Woolworths. I don't know if you had yeah, a Woolworths. Yeah. And I used to go in there as much as I could. And figures were really cheap back then. I don't know if you remember, they were like three ninety nine. Yeah. And I used to beg my mum, my nan, my granddad, whoever I was with, uh, just for Batman figures. And uh, it was all, all movie ones and the animated series ones because they were the, the popular ones at that point in time. And uh, I'll never forget... Um, I'm, I'm an only child, right? So I had a little bit of a spoilt uh, side to me when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> and we were coming home from Woolworths, and there was... Uh, do you remember the Batman Returns Robin figure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I saw it on the shelf, and I really wanted it. So me and my mum and my cousin Simon are walking home from town. And while I'm kicking off, I'm having a little paddy and a little spoilt fit, and I'm just like... <laughs> I want that, Robin, I want... So my cousin, I remember, because it was the night, he had curtains. So when my mum gave him the money and made him run back to town, and as he was running off, his hair was just, like, flapping up and down like winks, <laughs> which I found really funny, because obviously I was getting a Robin figure just because I had a little spoiled fit in the middle of the town. But what what was your... what was your? I imagine it's similar to me, like, the introduction to Batman and stuff. And Yeah, kind of. Um, I was introduced to Batman, God... It, I think it's going to have been the uh, the nine is it the, wait, nine, 1989 the Tim Burton movie. Yeah, yeah. Michael Keaton. I was introduced to that at a very stupidly young age. <laughs> uh, my dad was a big comic book nerd growing up as well, so I was in- instantly just thrown into Batman. And then obviously the the animated series as well were a big a big thing for me. Yeah, because we we had it on CITV here in the yeah, UK. Yeah. Didn't we? yeah and yeah. I remember that being on after school and stuff, and it it just captured my imagination straight from a young age like i was obsessed with batman and i I remember having the 89 video but my mum had recorded it off bbc one and she cut the um the tv guide out and it had a picture of jack nicholson's joker by the parade (laughs) and she put that in and she put that in the front of the video case and that was my first batman video before i had like the official vhs of it but (laughs) I mean, like, oh, one of the, one thing that, that I kind of always remember, um, I'm not sure if you're going to remember this, but do you remember there being the Warner Brothers shops? Like, no. a, bit, a bit like there is a Disney store now, there was a Warner Brothers shop, and outside, it, they had one in Sheffield, in Meadowhall, and the um, outside of the shop, they had, like, a big Bugs Bunny, and he was, like, a golden statue, like an Oscar. And you I'm, went, you went inside. Oh, mate, you went inside, and at the very back of the store, they had the Batmobile. And you could sit in it, and you'd put like fifty p in or whatever it was back then, and the 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 top part'd close in on you, and you'd have like an episode of the animated like series sat inside the Batmobile. Really? Yep. That was the, at Meadow Hall when I was a kid. Oh, the closest I've ever come <laughs> was outside of Toys R Us. They had the Batman Forever yeah, yeah, yeah. ride, and you put like fifty p in or whatever, and it just goes round and round and round. <laughs> But yeah, oh, I've never been. I never knew we had a Warner Brothers store here in England. Mm-hmm. They, because I'm I'm from Northamptonshire. All right. So, yeah. um, with <laughs> sounding as nice as possible, our town sucks. <laughs> like <laughs> our shops, are, uh, it's just getting worse and worse. We used to have a toy store called Beaties, which I don't know how he's my godfather because I'm not religious or I don't think I've ever been christened. But I've, my godfather was the manager of Beaties. So whenever new stock come in, he'd phone my mum and been like, I've got the new Batman stuff in. And I'd go down there and I, I was allowed to open the boxes. So, And I remember it specifically for Batman Forever because 
I was about six or seven years old at this point, mm-hmm. so I was a little bit older. And yeah, it's just it was just a crazy time in my life. It's it's one of them times where you wish you could look back on now, like you wish you recorded everything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, um, my no, kind sorry, of I'm... sorry, my my kind of first like Batman figure that I ever got was I, I was talking to you offline about it was that Ar- Arctic Batman where he came with the big like head thing that came over him so he could go underwater or whatever. Yeah, from the uh, the Batman Returns line, yes, yeah. yeah. That um, was my first Bat- Batman toy ever. That white Batman with two clenched fists. I think uh, I think mine was from the same wave, but it was Laser Batman. Mm. And he was in this black and grey outfit, classic sort of Batman look, but he had like this squared padding like design to the grey part of the suit, like a waffle sort of print <laughs> on him. But it was so close to a normal Batman that I didn't think nothing of it as a kid. And I remember that being one of my first um, actual Kenner figures that I owned. But um, we used to go to car boot sales as well when I was a kid. And my nan used to say he could see a Batman logo in a pile of crap. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, that's what my nan used to say about it. If it's black and yellow, I'll find it. And... Um, yeah, I used to get loads of, like, because obviously kids back then are selling their old Batman figures and you could get a couple of figures for a pound, do you know what I mean? And so I used to get loads of, like, loose figures from car boots and stuff because um, I'm, I I know how you're the king. You're, you're the man who will unbox it so we don't have to. I know that's <laughs> your, your tag. Um, even as a kid, I was really that, like, anal about my toys that I would always get to. Yeah. <laughs> and... I, because like I remember my nan, do you not want a bad guy with it? No, no, I want two of them ones so I can keep one and then have that one to play with. And I just remember everyone rolling their eyes and and or if like my auntie's bought me a Christmas present, they'd be like, oh, um, we've bought Daniel this one and oh he's already got that one. Oh, it don't matter, it don't matter, he'll have it anyway. Trust us. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So yeah, I was I was that kid. I was a bit weird. But. It's it's funny you should mention car boot sales because I've said this several times on my channel before. Back in the nineties, the best way to find figures was car boot sales because they were cheap as. It was. It was a really good time. My dad used to give me like three quid back then, and I'd come away with like an armful of figures and toys from like the like the eighties. Because <laughs> every <laughs> like everyone that like in the nineties, everyone that was like so we're talking like ninety five, ninety six. So everyone that grew up in like the late seventies, early eighties was selling their He Man's on, getting rid of all their Masters of the Universe yeah. collections and all that kind of stuff. And I was picking all them up for like dirt cheaper <laughs> car boot sale. I and the same as well as I had. Um, I've got older cousins and that, mm. and I'd get their hand me down. So I'd get mm-hmm. like Ninja Turtle, well Hero Turtle figures if we're going English UK player. with it. Yeah, because <laughs> we weren't allowed the ninjas. We only had heroes back in the day. <laughs> And uh, I remember having the van and that, but the... Um, do you remember the turtle van? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the blimp. Uh, my, my hinge on the side door was broken because it was a hand-me-down from my cousin Simon. And uh, it used to bug me because any time that you'd knock it, the door would just fling off. And it was like, <laughs> oh, well, this isn't really that fun to play with. <laughs> like, they had, they had the, where the big tur- turtles blimp. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, do you remember that, bad boy? Yes, I never actually had the inflatable, but I had the device they sat in, like the, mm-hmm. the part they sat in. But I remember seeing it in a toy shop hanging from a ceiling, and it was huge. Mm-hmm. Like it was really like a massive piece. How do you know how much roughly they went for back in the day? I have no idea. <laughs> they go for a lot now, though. <laughs> yes, have you seen? Have you seen the Ghostbusters towers? And oh stuff? yeah, ridiculous yeah. surprised. It's nuts to think that I used to use one of them. Yep. Because it had the pole as a Batman and Robin thing. So I did the same thing. Uh, yeah, see. It's, I'm telling you, the 90s kids were the most creative kids out of like, anyone because we didn't have all the video games and that. We had mm-hmm. some, but we, we were all figure based kids. Yeah. That's all we did was play with figures. But um, I, I here's, here's one of my questions I was going to pitch to you because obviously it, it, this is the first time we're having a proper chat and. Um, what was your first Batman film at the cinema? First Batman film at the cinema, probably Batman Forever. Really? Yeah, it would have been Batman Forever. Would have been my first because obviously Batman Returns. And I want to see that at the cinema. I would have been too young. Yeah, so you... I think I think that would have been a fifteen certificate too. Mm, well, yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, because eighty nine was twelve. Yeah. At the cinema, but video was a fifteen. Yeah. 
because it was the first ever one to do that for whatever reason. Um, yeah, I'm kind of gutted. Uh, mine was Batman and Robin. <laughs> but I, I, I hold a, I hold a special place for that film. I know loads of people just hate that film, but I think it's great. I actually rate it over Returns. Oh yeah, Batman and Robin. As much as people hate it, I think if you grew up in the era of the nineties, just the fact that they had like Arnold Schwarzenegger in it was like a big plus for nineties kids. <laughs> it was diabolically bad, but it was hilarious. It, it's amazing though because I watch it now, and it just seems like a, an expensive episode of the Adam West show. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it was like they had a lot of budget, and they were like. Well, if we could get Adam and Bert, we would definitely do that. But we'll settle for George and Chris. They'll be fine. But it, it was, yeah, I, I loved it. I loved it. Um, in fact, when my, my granddad was the, the, the man who took me to watch the film, and uh, when he passed on, I instead of getting a tattoo saying granddad or whatever, I actually got, um, I don't know if you can see it, but I got the Batman and Robin logo on my arm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, because um, <laughs> and loads of people are like, "Why you got that film on your arm? That film's crap." Rah, rah, rah. And I'm like, "No, no, no, it's all right. It's a good film. It's better than it's better than The Dark Knight Rises and Batman Returns." So sure. <laughs> and uh, did I see that you had the Watchman smiley face on your yes. arm there as well? Yes, you'll notice as well that if I've got um, if I've got a Batman logo yeah. anywhere, it's usually covering up ex girlfriends' names. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, there's, there's that as well. Batman logos will cover anything; it's fine. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, going back to figures, then obviously grow, growing up in the nineties and that we, the the card art and everything was just fantastic back then. It mm-hmm. really did suck you in as a kid when you were walking around a store and you saw like <gasps> Batman figures or or X Men or Spider Man, whatever, because we had all of that good stuff growing up, and it really did draw you in. The cards were so colourful and and bold and everything you just wanted to go and look at the toys all the time like so if like your parents or whatever are, are shopping around you're like oh can we go in there can we go in there please please i want i want to see this i want to see this and i don't know about you but nine times out of ten like i said i was a spoiled child but i'd always end up coming away with summer yeah same yeah. <laughs> yeah um what obviously you've told me your first um batman figure you remember yep what, what about joker First Joker figure I would have ever had would have been the animated series Joker. Oh, okay. Um, are we talking classic purple or the Mask of Phantasm jetpack version? No, they the, were the regular. Years. Oh, the regular with the laughing it was the regular. Gas. Yeah, it was the regular purple one. He had like a big cheesy grin on his face. Yes. And, and the, I, the I used orange to, tank. Yeah, I used to like that one because I remember that with the animated series car you pulled out the back part and you had the uh, the, the the wing the jet thing yes yeah i remember that yeah i think i've still got that like one of the wheels is <laughs> and but... joker's uh, joker like he had the little prongs at the front and joker's head fit in that perfectly so like just pick him up <laughs> with it and fly him around that's pretty sick man that's it <laughs> <laughs> i could understand grabbing him by like his arms and his legs nope. but his head. straight neck you're, you're, your batman's a savage then, my, ba- right. my batman <laughs> killed things <laughs> nice. um what about robin then did you did are you one of these guys who hates robin because nope. there are the people out there in the world that full-on are just like oh robin's rubbish batman doesn't need him rah, rah, rah. i'm a massive robin fan i think mm-hmm. robin's great what, um, what? I obviously grew up in the nineties. Chris O'd, uh, he was Chris O'Dowd on it. Chris O, yeah, Chris, Chris O'Dowd. O'Donnell. Chris O'Donnell. Chris O'Dowd's the Irish guy. Chris O'Donnell. <laughs> he was the um, he was kind of a, obviously a big influence in those nineties movies. So I had his figure. I had the Batman Forever Robin figure. I also yeah. had the Batman and Robin Robin figure, that metallic red one. Yes, the, um, the dark red. Yeah. Yeah, and then I also had. I think it was. Was it called the the Legends of Batman series? And they had the like Buccaneer Robin. I had that one as well. Yeah, oh, oh, they were an ugly set though, weren't they? Oh yeah, but I I had every single one of them. I had like the Viking Batman and the swashbuckling Batman. I'll tell you a story about that. Um, Do you remember? um, Well, I'm sure you remember. You remember Sugar Puffs? Yeah, yeah. They do you remember them figures came with a card, like a playing card, and it had a dedicated card out for that figure. Mm -hmm. So. First mate Robin or whatever he was called would have had a pirate looking Robin. Yep. Um, if you found the Joker card in the serial, um, they sent you the first wave of figures. Wow. And I 
I actually did that. I, I found the first mate Joker and got the first wave for free. That is cool. And because um, I weren't going to get them because I, I was like I love Batman at the time and I was probably about eight or nine at this point when they were coming out and I was like but they're all just so weird they're like really like elseworldy sort of yeah you know samurai Batman and ironically they had one called Batman of the Future but he's in like green and gold and he looks nothing like what would eventually be Terry McGuinness's costume but that was the only reason I even bothered picking them up was because I won the first load so I was like okay I'm in now because <laughs> I, I got the first <laughs> one. that's fine but um out of them ones as well that that was when they that and Batman Forever was where they first started to do the plastic capes mm -hmm. and I really hated them because you couldn't put them in the cars you couldn't put them on vehicles hell you, they they couldn't even sit down like it was ridiculous. I hated plastic capes. <laughs> yeah, because all the old ones before that all came with those little mesh cloth-like capes, didn't they? Yes, yeah. And, and then there was... Like a little bit of wire or whatever, the pipe yeah. cleaner you could clip onto their neck. Yeah. Yeah, they, they were much better. Like, I, oh, I can <coughs> take hate plastic capes. <laughs> but, um, with, with obviously, you saying, um, uh... The, the Arctic Batman was one of your first Batmans you picked up and all that. Yeah. Um, did you, as a kid, sit there and be like, oh, he's white? Or... No, I think... Do, do you know what I mean? Like, oh, the paint scheme was horrible. Oh. No, because I think, like, because obviously var variant figures back then weren't as massive as they are now. But, um, like, I don't know. I, I was never... It was, it was still Batman. It was just a different yeah. version of Batman. But yeah, it was no. I, I was. I don't think I ever had that because I had so many different ones that I'd. They were all randomly different. So I mean, I just took it as a Batman figure. He's got a different suit of armor. It's, it, they literally fleeced us for every penny we had because yeah. they were like, they were like, oh look, it's the same figure, but he's got this weapon and he's now got purple suit. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I'll get it. But I am um, one of my ones that I really hated growing up, um, which is ironic because it's grown on me now. Is, um, do you remember from that same Batman Returns wave, they did him in a metallic brown suit? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's called Power Wing Batman. Yeah. And uh, I just hated it because it was like, why is Batman the colour of poo? Like, <laughs> why, why is Batman wearing this suit? Like, I, I, as a kid, I couldn't process it. Like, he would never, he's never wore a brown suit, ever. You know what I mean? He's, he's never wore a bright yellow suit. I don't get it. <laughs> But yeah, but now now as an adult collector, whenever I see them at conventions or on eBay or anything, I'm like, because I'm a massive completionist as well, like, I need to get it, I need to get it. <laughs> so, oh, it's 25 quid, I'll buy that, I'll buy that. But yeah, as a kid, I couldn't stand variants. Like, they did my head in, they really did. But I would end up getting them because you had more Batmans than you did villains. So if you had some pocket money, you couldn't get another villain like especially from film waves and stuff it just let's take like batman forever for argument's sake as soon mm -hmm. as you've got riddler and two-face all there was left to get was batman and robins and once you got the two normal ones it was like well i've got pocket money i want to get a toy yep i suppose i'll get one of these rubbish variants do you know what i mean just because it was burning a hole in your pocket as a kid well see like i didn't have any of the villains from the movies as figures <laughs> All my okay. villains were animated series villains. Every last one of them. <laughs> it were. So I had, I had did loads of... Did then as a kid? No. No? No, never. I must have been like the weirdest kid in the world. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, when we used to play figures or whatever, you know, you get your toy box out and mm -hmm. you get all your figures out and you play and stuff. Um, my cousin Shane would like play figures with me and stuff. And he'd always pick this this animated series Batman it was a green one and he came in a little I don't know if you remember it was like a see through sphere and it had like a plastic blue bat ring and you could turn it but oh Batman, yeah, yeah yeah but the Batman would stay dead straight yeah, yeah it, it was weird um, he'd always play with that one he wouldn't put a cape on him or nothing and he'd always be that Batman and I'm sat there like Batman's grey and blue like <laughs> <laughs> why are you playing with that one and he didn't care he he I'm I'm just a freak, mate. I'm a weird kid. <laughs> I had that red. It was like a red burgundy kind of coloured Batman with a black cape, with the black head and cape and stuff. But then he had like this big apparatus that sat over his head, and you could, he shot discs out of the top. That's the uh, the infrared Batman. Yes, I had that one as well. <laughs> yeah, I um, because what they did, I don't know. 
I might have it somewhere to hand. They did a uh, a, ma- a special mail away version mm. of it, and they just repainted it again. And then they were like, "Here you go. Here's <laughs> here's the mail away special edition Batman." And I picked that up online recently. It's quite pricey though, so I was lucky. I won it for thirty pounds. So, but um, and obviously then the, with then there sorry, was like, no, sorry. sorry, then there was like a, a another Batman that always bugged me that I had as a kid. It was like it was like a like a black and black and white, almost like lightning bolt white things lightning on him. Lightning strikes Batman. Yeah. yeah, and it had that weird cape that looked like it was him covering himself, like he did in the show, where the cape was all, but it was plastic, where yep. and you could open it out and. Looked like he was flying and stuff. Yeah, I remember that one. I had that one as well. Yeah. That, wow. See, some of them old ones. See, I hated the variants, but some of them were pretty cool in the sense of their gadgets. Mm-hmm. Like, um, do you remember the one with um, the mech wing? And it did the Batman Returns thing where his wings popped out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that one. And he was in like a silver suit with like black pipes on mm-hmm. it and stuff. And yeah, you press the wings and it popped out and stuff. Mm-hmm. But, um, what were you like for vehicles then, as a kid? I only had I had the one I had the animated series, uh, Bat Batmobile with the with the wing in, that went inside of it. I had that one. That was it. That that, that that was like my only vehicle. Oh really? Oh no, I had the bike. Oh yeah. No, I had a bike as well. Oh, uh, is that the one with him actually on it? You pull it back. And yeah, let and let go, go of it. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> used to do my mum's head in that one, did because of the noise it made because it was really screechy, weren't it? Yeah, really loud. <laughs> Yeah, it, it really annoyed her. Um, uh, you know, you know how you collect now as well. Mm-hmm. This is another thing because obviously, I mean, I'm intrigued to find out. You know, this is your channel. You know, yeah. you're, the, you're the super sorrel. Um, you you collect. You've got your hand in a lot of different pies now. Obviously, you love Star Wars. You're big on your Marvel stuff, and you still pick up Batman and DC stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, was you the same as a kid, or were you just like Batman or Spider Man? What what was like? I literally, if it was an action figure, I've been this. I've always been the same. If it was an action figure and they made movies or TV programs out of it, I wanted it. Oh, um, really? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I even had like back, back to the whole going to like car boot sales. That, that is where I predominantly picked up a lot of stuff. And yeah. I had everything from He Man right through to like Batman's, um, right through to the like the Spider Man X Men, the, all the original like X Men waves that came out. I had all yeah. the um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Biker Mice from Mars, all them kind of things. So, Street li- Sharks. Yeah, man. Oh. Street <laughs> Sharks. Yeah, you're taking me down this uh, this 90s nostalgia <laughs> era. <laughs> but, like, oh, but I, like, when I was a kid, I wasn't one of these kids that was like, oh, I'm playing Batman, so I'm only going to get the Batman figures out. I had a box, just a bin full of figures, and it was just all random figures that were in it. So, li- literally, sometimes Batman was teaming up with Superman and then teaming up with Spider-Man, randomly thrown in for f- just for kicks. Really? Yeah, like Joker and Magneto teamed up a lot. It's it's <laughs> it's starting to feel like now that I had a really crap childhood. Because <laughs> I I was a, I was like no no they can't mix they can't cross over. I I was like the heads of companies before <laughs> they owned the rights. I'm like no they can't cross over. Are you crazy? What's the matter with you? But um <laughs> yeah no I I just couldn't do that as a kid. I, there's some little thing in my brain was like no batman has to play with batman people and spider-man has to play with spider-man people oh it was but, it was well known maybe sometimes as well because i had the uh, the wwf blue ring yeah. that made all the noises and stuff and it was renowned that batman would come along sometimes on a saturday night to kick hulk hogan's ass so i mean <laughs> <laughs> oh mate i remember that ring as well yeah and um, because me my mate matthew when we were really young he had a ring, the blue ring, but mm-hmm. his had black poles and mine had dark blue poles and we could never work out why because it was long before the days of the internet and everyone, somebody's discovered that it was a, a variant they did, rah, rah, rah. But yeah, it used to bug us that his had black ring posts and mine had dark blue ring posts and it was like, oh, really? It was really, yeah, it was really strange. But So were you, were you big into the, the WWF then or is that a lifelong thing or did you drop out or come back in? Or? No, I am... Um, that again has been a lifelong thing. Um, still, still watching out. I don't watch the weekly shows anymore. I haven't watched weekly shows since I was a kid, but I, I tune into like every pay per view they do usually. So the one a month I'll watch. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I um, uh, I can't I can't sit and watch it like I used to. I mean, I'm I'm still a re- I've been a wrestler for the best part of twenty years as well. Like my my family hmm. were all a part of wrestling when I was growing up. My mum used to be what they what was called a water girl back in the day. Um. 
loads of my friends growing up we all learned because there was local wrestling school so we all learned and uh, i still do shows like every every month but um ironically my character is called mr j and i dress quite similar to the joker hmm. without trying without trying to get sued by dc <laughs> um, <laughs> um but yeah um but I, as far as wrestling is concerned um toy wise we'll go back to toys um the attitude era for me was was it i absolutely loved it i was trying to pick up every toy i could for that in fact batman took a back seat for wwf figures at one point in my life like round about 10 11 and um was that was that ever the same for you were you like boom bum let's get rid of this now i'm growing up i need wrestlers and <laughs> yeah i think around the time that they released i think it's I think when Mattel first got the license for WWE and they started producing the the really high, you know, like you like the like the, the same they are now. Really, they haven't really changed in twenty years. Really, it's when the, for the first started doing like the Rock figure that had all the bendy elbows, the bendy wrists, knee joints. Yeah, I know the ones you mean. Um, they went, we, we they went from being those like blocky, stuck in a one pose to being fully articulated, and it was at that point that I came into it. About yeah, the, probably the the attitude era figures probably. What did we used to call them? We used to have a name for them. Uh, 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 Titan Tron figures. We used yes. to call them Tron figures because they used, some of them used to have that metal clip on their feet, didn't it? So mm-hmm. you could put it on the the entrance way and it it'd do their entrance music and stuff. But God, I I ain't talked about them in years. Man. <laughs> and just... I might have to change the name of this episode to <laughs> Super um, Soul Back to the Nineties. One thing that like I mean I've, I've I've told this to everyone. I think long long time ago in the probably the late nineties. Uh, I think I I made this deal with the uh, with the devil and basically said uh, you must make the rock a multimillionaire and a multi-million movie star and now I'm bound to watch every movie he ever makes. <laughs> so you you're the reason he's no longer in the WWF. Thanks for that. <laughs> Mate, I, I I'm the only guy that was sat in the cinema watching the Tooth Fairy. I was the only one there. <laughs> I can imagine, man. I can imagine. <laughs> Oh, poor Dwayne. Well, no, not poor Dwayne. Dwayne's doing all right for himself. <laughs> so going back on towards sort of Batman, what what do you think of the recent news of uh, Spin Master gaining the license from Mattel? I'm not going to lie, and I've been quite vocal towards my friends who all collect that. I'm so glad Mattel doesn't have Batman anymore. Oh, really? I've, yeah. I, see, this is going to sound really bad. Um, I've not been a massive fan of Mattel for a long time, I think, they miss the mark quite a lot. Mm. And this isn't a put down on them. It's just uh, you're so close, a little bit more effort. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, did you did you get the um, the Val Kilmer figure they recently released? They did a Val Kilmer and uh, and the Flash from the 90s TV show as well. Did you see them at all? Yeah, I saw them, but I didn't bother collecting them. I weren't overly impressed with them. No, exactly. Exactly my point. I am... Um, I picked one up purely because um, Val Kilmer was meant to be at Wales Comic Con mm. um, last year. So I was like, oh, I'm going to get to meet Batman. I, I better get a decent figure. And that was a decent ish figure to get signed. Yeah. And I was like, oh. Um, it arrived and then Val dropped out from the, um, the con. So I was like, ah, oh, I'm sort of stuck with this figure. And after looking at it a lot, I'm like, I don't think even Val Kilmer would want to sign it. I, it, I think he'd look at it and be like, that's not me. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, like, it's a really bad figure. So I'm really good for this new chapter of what are we going to get. Um, it's a shame that they've cut the, um, what, what are they calling it, the Mission Masters that they've just been doing? Yeah, the You've Mission been Masters. Doing yeah. Them. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you better get your hands on that Two Face soon because if they've yep. lost the license, yeah, you might struggle to get that one. Well, it's 2020 but, um, when they officially lose the license. We've still got um, a year's worth of Batman stuff by Mattel. I would have thought. Yeah, it's 2020 when the license officially takes over with Spin Master. So they're so. they're doing all their prep work now to. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I'm excited because um, a little part of me hoped it was going to go. Um, not not to Neck because obviously they do the more high end stuff, but to another company like Hasbro Kenner because like, yeah. obviously they merged as one but then I did some research I don't think Hasbro's, Hasbro's even around now are they I think they've all jacked it in or are they still around is Hasbro, Hasbro. still going no, no Hasbro's still going yeah, yeah. oh is it well I was kind of hoping it would go back to that side but if they're going to someone new um, what's it called Spin Spin Masters they, so the, the reason people got worried when the announcement of Spin Masters came out is because they're renowned for making Paw Patrol merchandise and Peppa Pig so this is going to be their first like 
dip in the adult collector's market, I believe. As far as I'm aware, oh. they haven't done any adult collector's stuff or, like, that level of, like, group age stuff. It's, like, a lot of infantile stuff they do at the minute. So. Okay, now, now I'm worried. <laughs> now I'm, maybe Mattel wasn't uh, the wrong step. <laughs> but, um... I know Mattel. I know Mattel. Like they said, they do. They do their more high-end figures, like mm -hmm. their their twenty-pound figures, um, multiverse for argument's sake. Um, the basic lines they've been doing. I actually sat and had a good chat with uh, my co-host Stephen about this. Um, the figures we were just talking about, the Kenner figures, like from the films and yeah. the animated series and stuff like that. Well, I sat back and thought about it. They were the basic line back then, but they yeah. were also it. That that is it. You didn't have Yep. no high end stuff it was just the basic line and so for me to sit there and be like oh I hate oh, the Batman v Superman and Justice League figures oh they're ugly they're ugly you know they're £7 £10 whatever they are and I was like well actually no because some kid is probably picking them up just like we did as kids yep. and he's like these are my Batman figures just like we're gushing about our old Batman figures so in 10-15 years time when that kid's grown up he'll be like oh the, the Justice League figures, oh, they're amazing. I used to have them as a kid. I'm looking on eBay to find them because I want them carded and stuff like that. And, yeah, it's just weird how time just ticks over and we continue on this loop. Yeah. So, for me, for me, slagging an, another company's work to be like, well, my company was better. In, But do you know what I mean? Like, some kids out there is finding these Justice League figures now and stuff, and they're like, these are my favourites. So... I'm trying not to knock them as much now. I'm trying to be a bit more open-minded. But I, I am excited. My my one thing is, uh, obviously being a big animated series fan, yeah. I'm worried that DC collectibles are slowly, slowly dying down mm. on the animated stuff. And it worries me because they've got so much stuff they can make. Because we've we've lost the Joker mobile now. I don't know if you heard about that. Yeah, we lost that. Yeah. Um... I don't know about you, but I'm struggling to find that Rogues Gallery set. Yep, struggling like yeah. crazy. It's like £600 now. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. Um, and it's really good because um, on one of our vlogs on over on Fat Pod, um, it's in the window of um, Forbidden Planet in Nottingham. Yeah. And I had the money to get it, but me being the good boyfriend, got my partner's Christmas presents for her. <laughs> so, and then when it comes time to August, I met a seller who had um, the set for sale again and they were like look I'll do it for 200 quid and I was like uh, yeah alright then um, it was my partner's birthday again so she, she's cost me it twice now so and then anywhere I look online now it's all like five, 600 quid so yeah I'm kind of gutted I didn't pull the trigger on that one <laughs> but but yeah are, are, are you worried that they're going to just wrap it up and we're going to be left with a few gaps in the collection yeah, um, it seems to be it's not just the animated series line that they seem to be like falling back with. It's like I've noticed like the bombshells line, a bunch of them got announced, then a bunch got cancelled, and then they've recommissioned a bunch of other ones. And I'm just hope they don't get cancelled now. Yeah, it's ridiculous because DC collectibles are not Mattel though, are they? No, I believe that's an in-house function. Yeah, that's their that's their own stuff. Which I was surprised that when when they announced that the, the Mattel lost the license originally, I, when I thought about reading that article, I thought, oh, maybe they're taking everything in-house. Yeah. And DC collectibles will be just DC toys or DC kids or something like that, and it'll just become their own brand. I but think that would have been better because they, they do really good work. Mm. These DC in house stuff is really good. Um, I know some people complain about certain bits and bobs, but I, I think they do really good work. Mm. Um, as far as like the animated series is concerned, um, I do this thing now where because like I said, like we said earlier, you're the man who unboxes. I'm I'm not. <laughs> I, I like I like mine on the wall, so mm. I'll buy the proper ones from a comic book shop and I'll spend the full twenty twenty two pound on them. Then when they get to B and M, I'll buy them to have them loose. So, and B and M have been really good. Like they've they've not there's only two people they've not had in their store, and that's Mamba and Roxy Rocket. And that's I'm been... I'm still holding out for them two to arrive eventually because I mean they've just started putting in. Um, oh, I forgot the names of the damn figures. The Etrigan. one, yeah, the the Etrigan figure, and they've also got they had two 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 packs recently, didn't they? Um, they had the uh, Dark Knight Legends of the yes. Dark Knight three pack, and, and then had the two Girls pack. Night Out. Yes, so I'm hoping, yeah. and they had the Mad Love two pack as well recently with Joker and Harley. Yeah. 
So I they mean, had Phantasm ages ago. Yeah. Yeah. And so then, they've, they've been really good. Yeah. They had the Batman and Robin two pack with the uh, light as well. Yeah, the bat signal. Yeah. So there's still I'm... a chance that they might get some of these like 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 uh, Man Bat and Roxy Rocket, the bigger sort of package ones. They might still get them in. The only thing that I think that they won't get them in is because of how early their numbers are. Because obviously they're oh, all yeah, numbered. Yeah. And Man Bat was like number seven, so I'm like, have they missed him completely? Like, but ho- hopefully, fingers crossed, they get him in. Um, the the one the one I, <laughs> me and my mates keep joking about is, could you imagine if they get the uh, the Rogues Gallery GCPD set? <laughs> they sell it for like sixty quid or something. I'll be like, yeah, I'll get two of them. Because <laughs> yeah, but that's never gonna happen. Um, hopefully, Clayface is on his way though to B and M. Mm. Because I'm I'm quite friendly with the people at B and M now. They know me. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm in there so much. They, oh look, it comes it comes the chubby Batman fan. So so they they know of me, and um, uh, yeah, they they sort of let me know. They let me look on the invoices of like mm-hmm. what's coming in and stuff. But it won't say individuals. It'll just say a batch of or whatever. Yeah, Batman Batman figures and stuff. But, um, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to like um them getting more and more in because it's it saves me a fortune on doubles like the price of three b&m figures is the price of one in forbidden planet or yep. any, any comic book shop you you go to but um uh going back to old figures as well mm-hmm. do you remember um uh the penguin from the old movie figures the, the danny devito penguin yes yeah yeah he looks more like the superpowers penguin yep. repainted Mm-hmm. Um, I've actually met a guy online and I'll, I'll send the pictures over to you as well so you can have a good old look um, I, I wasn't happy with the fact that we never got a Danny DeVito accurate penguin mm. so this customizer online uh, he does really good work and cheap as well he's done me the two figures for £80 which um, is really cool as far as I'm concerned because a lot of work's gone into him he's making me a Danny DeVito accurate penguin and a Michael Keaton accurate Batman return suit figure. And nice. um, the work he's done is, is phenomenal. Um, his name's Matthew Hackley. So if you if you get a chance, I look at his work and he does incredible stuff. And um, yeah, he, he's, he's just a really good old boy. He, um, he messaged me saying, oh, I accidentally broke the arm off your Batman. What I'll do is I'll make you another Batman. Which one do you want? And I'll send him for free as well. So I'm getting three figures just because it's took him a little bit longer. So right. he's he's a top he's a top bloke, he's, you know. But um I'm, yeah, I'm, that peng- that I'm, penguin figure is a mess. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if it's the same guy that I might have seen because I've seen a, a customizer recently. Um he's a UK based, I'm guessing, yeah. No, no, he's US. Oh, he's US. He's, yeah, he's in the states. Ah, so I saw a guy recently who'd done he'd taken a um you know the <clears throat> like the Supergirl figure that they released for the DC animated line that came with the Girls Night Out pack. Yes, he's basically yes. taken that figure and then made a custom uh, Harley head without the mask on and oh, really? made like a civilian Harley Quinn. And he gave her the two dogs with the leads, you know, the two he, like hyena things on the leads with the big red hat on and stuff from that episode oh, of the animated yeah, the, series. The, the, yeah, the title card of Ho- Harley's Holiday. Yeah, he made, he yeah. made a, um, a, like a custom of that. Also, is it is it um, inanimate objects? Is it that guy? I don't know. I'm gonna have to look it up after the show now. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can find a picture. <coughs> but yeah, because um, some customizer out there, they do fantastic work. Mm. They do really good work. Um, what was I gonna say to you as well? Uh, talking about Batman and nostalgia and stuff like that. <coughs> how how do you feel about um, the '60s show in general, the Adam West show? Well, I was introduced to Batman, like the whole Batman franchise, through Adam West's Batman. Channel oh, really? five, yeah, Channel Five back in like the early nineties used to do like 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 six a.m. in the morning. They used to put like two back to back on a Saturday morning. <laughs> so every Saturday, I would get up at ridiculous o'clock and uh, sit and watch Adam West Batman. But it was the Adam West one that I was introduced to, but the, the whole Batman franchise through. As a kid, did you ever like? realised the the shift in tone or was it all just Batman to you? Just it was just Batman. It never Yeah, it's nothing, same with me. Everything went straight over like, my head. Yeah, I I noticed obviously his costumes were different but I just it it was never played for laughs for me. It was all serious. I, I really enjoyed it as a kid. I remember it being on um channel four after school. Alright, yeah yeah. 
that again but that's probably late uh, well no yeah probably about mid 90s but um, yeah I remember it being on after school and I used to record it but my my nan would record things on long play so you get longer out the tape if you remember that yeah 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 and uh I think my mum only had a, a short play player, a video player. So when you put it in, it'd be like, rip, 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 and it was like, oh, that's annoying. So you couldn't actually watch it, which was a pain in the ass, but it was, it was still good. Because yeah, the um, um, I, I used to love the endings at every episode where where I, I, I still love. I, I've I've taken the mick out of this so many times in my videos before. Where it's like, um, will Batman get to Robin in time? Same bat time, same bat channel. I love that voiceover. It's the best thing ever. Yeah, I remember that so I, well. I kind of want to go and get that and put it as a text tone on my phone to annoy the crap out of everybody with. Yeah, oh, that's, <laughs> that is the best though. I, I, love, I love that voiceover. Especially when it... Because he used to be like just the narrator in general. He'd yeah, be like, yeah. meanwhile, in the commissioner's <laughs> office. And it's just them pacing up and down. Um... <laughs> so, um, obviously, you've got a lot of stuff. And I've, I've seen you've got bins full of toys to review you've mm -hmm. got stuff all behind you probably as we're speaking right now boxes and boxes of stuff yep um where do you stand on some more of the the high-end stuff like are you into the hot toys like the what the six scale figures or are, are you just sticking with your, your six seven inch figures and or where do you stand on them um i've always never bothered to collect the high-end stuff because I have always said to myself, and I, I was like this as a kid, it was like, do I want one of these big items or do I want like seven or eight of these little ones? So I would always go for like the most amount of figures possible. Yeah, that's a fair point. No, I, I respect that. And I stick to that's that to this day, really. I mean, like, uh, people keep asking me, are you going to do hot toys on the channel? It's like, no, because like for the well, price of one hot toy, that's like more or less just short of two Marvel Legends waves. That I could get yeah. instead. So yeah, sure. for me, it's always been about how much, how much, in, like how much I can get from my bank. Like how much bank can I get out of my book, basically. If you want to put it that way. Yeah. How how um have you took account recently of how much you have? Nope. And I I, I really dare do that <laughs> because I'm scared of how much money I've spent. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure, mate. <laughs> I'll bet you in the thousands though. Well, it, it, it was my dad recently who I, who came in the room, looked around, and went. You do have collector's insurance, right? And I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that'll be a nightmare for you because you'll have to sit there and take a quote of every single thing and oh, to make, make yeah, a no. list. And this room, this I mean, I mean, it's a bedroom and it's full to the brim. Really? I, I've took over yeah, the entire room of the house. Out? So do, you, do you ever swap? Do you ever swap things out? Do you like? Uh, that's had its day up there now. I'm yeah. gonna put this up there. Yeah. So recently, uh, I'm not sure if you saw one of my videos recently. I did like the little display piece where I've got like about twelve figures on like a little stand. Is that the one with me. the um, through step stand? Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 I did see that. Yeah. So I've got that on display now. So I've been able to display a bun like a random bunch of figures, which I'm gonna change out monthly. I think. Yeah. What 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 you got in mind for? the the figure of the month for is it not happened yet uh, not happened yet so basically I'll basically decide on five figures uh, that I've reviewed throughout January and then I'll mm -hmm. put that to a public vote on the channel and like people who watch can basically vote and choose the figure of the month and it'll get a spot on the on the shelf yeah I watched I watched your um, six armed spider-man and it just uh -huh. made me want to go and watch the old cartoon yeah yeah, it just made me want to go and watch the Chris Daniel Barnes cartoon. It was, it was, it was a good episode. But the um, Hasbro missed the mark on that figure so badly. Do you think yeah. the only thing I didn't like was the um, the the red color joints uh, on the pegs? Basically, the 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 arms that were attached to him couldn't rotate because they were hitting each other. So there was like a lot of QC issues with it. Like um, the fit, the arms couldn't come out for one because if it did, you just have solid holes through the figure. Yeah. Um, they didn't. They didn't include anything to plug them with, so you couldn't like take the arms off the Spider Man. So that you always had to have them on, and then they didn't rotate properly because of the way they were positioned. They just kept rubbing against each other and scuffing all the paintwork up. Um, yeah. And then it would just it wouldn't stand up because it was so top heavy because of the piece they'd used with all the arms. It was so yeah, top yeah. heavy that the guy just kept falling over every ten seconds. 
and they didn't so give he's... him any form of torso articulation on that one because of the the arms that were coming, like the, because of the way they had to make the figure. There was no like torso or, or waist swivel, so you couldn't really pose him as a Spider-Man figure. He would just stood up, and that's not how he acts in that episode. He's like no, he's no, crawling no. throughout nearly all of it. Yeah, he's very agile in that episode. So in the, fact, and the figure more. was yeah, and the figure was like exact opposite. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um... Oh man, I love that cartoon as well. Um, the Night is Spider Man. What a fantastic show. <laughs> we we were spoiled for choice though back in the nineties, weren't we? If we're, mm-hmm. if we're honest. Oh yeah. We, um, so I'm I'm gonna break it down for you as well. Um, another thing I want to know: favorite episode from the animated series. Um, I think I've said this on my channel several thousand times now. My favorite oh, episode. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I always bang on bang on about this. My favorite episode will always be Christmas with the Joker. I love that. Yes, I, mean, I do remember. You I think it's that. like episode three of the first series. That is to yeah. me is just it's like it's so nostalgic. Every Christmas Eve, without fail, I'll have breakfast like a child with cocoa pops on my knee and watch that damn episode. <laughs> um, would you have liked to see the Tim Curry version though? Because obviously it did get out there for a little bit until Mark re-recorded it. Because Tim Curry was cast mm-hmm. as Joker by like the first six episodes or something i have never heard tim curry's version but i would love to because i imagine that tim curry would do an incredibly sinister joke (laughs) well i was i was really hoping they were going to stick them episodes on the new blu-ray they just released but no no luck no maybe it's a contract issue with tim curry or whatever but um okay here's a question then um how long have we been talking for is is it uh, I, I have no idea. I'm just going to keep it going until it naturally oh, no, feels that's, done. That's fine then. <laughs> as, as, a comic, uh, as a comic book slash figure collector, yeah. um, and touch wood, obviously, this is just hypothetical, you have to save one piece of your collection and the rest has to go by whatever means, like whether yeah. it's a fire or uh, the repo man comes and takes everything. What's the one figure you keep? Ooh, Sorry figure. to put you on the spot. Me and my mates Damn. do this all the time. So, uh, I'll tell you what. The one figure that I would definitely reach for would be the... Um, probably the Mayfex Harley Quinn. Oh, yeah. Uh, I the love, Suicide Squad one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because the likeness to Margot Robbie is insane in that figure. Yes, yeah, so absolutely. It's, it's a very nice piece. That would um, be the one that I'd grab for if it were. That would be your, that would yeah. be your saving grace. That would be. And I then, mean, as much as I love all the Marvel stuff, and as much as I love all the Star Wars stuff, meh, it's, it'll always come down to the, to Harley for me. Yeah, no, I don't blame you. So I'm just going to turn a lot on here because obviously it's getting quite dark. Yeah. Um, um, my my one piece that I would save. Yep. And it was only by luck that I got it. Is um, my combat belt, Batman. Um, from the original animated series line um i was my partner jenny she bought me a couple of christmases ago because she knew it was my favorite figure growing up as a kid so she she bought me it for christmas and it was my big you know you get a big present that's your that's your big present yeah um and then obviously last year i was fortunate enough i mean you've got me on facebook you've seen my profile picture Mm -hmm. i was fortunate enough to meet kevin conroy himself yeah and get that signed so that'll be the one thing that I will grab, and that will be coming in a box with me when my time okay. is gone. Because that thing, that thing's coming with me. Because uh, that that was the best day of my adult life so far, having that figure and meeting meeting the man himself. Like yeah. um, Stephen, my co-host, um, his thing is uh, what what did he say he'd he'd grab? I think he said it was his crow hot toy that he's got he's got do you remember the crow, the crow yeah, yeah he said he'll grab his hot toy he said that that's why he'll grab because uh steven's collection is really niche like because he's an ant-man fan and ant-man doesn't have a whole lot of stuff he, he genuinely he's just like got got a, a section he's got near enough everything but he's just got a section it's just ant-man he started to venture out into power rangers now which is cool I mean, but for for my money, um, I was only ever into the Mighty Morphin. I don't know. I don't know about yourself if you stuck yeah. with it. No, Mighty Morphin, and then I think I think I think our generation kind of grew up after Mighty Morphin came to a natural close. Anyway, yeah. I think we kind of grew up, but by the time like the rest of them came out, Turbo and SPD and all that, I think we were a bit older at that point. 
Yeah, so, so I, you, I so I naturally really fell off. Them. Yeah, so kind of like not, uh, uh, you naturally fell off when they did type thing. Yeah, I was I was Mighty Morphin. Then as soon as the Red Ranger changed to Rocky instead of Jason, <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, I'm out, I'm done. But yeah, so uh, yeah, my Power Ranger life didn't last very long. I had a few figures and stuff growing up, but n- nothing that I would ever feel the need to go back and get or anything. See, I was always the Tommy fan. Oh really? Yeah, I was always rooting for Tommy. And it's people like you that made Jason lose his Red Ranger leadership. <laughs> Did you prefer him as green or white? Green, green all the way, green. Good man, good man. At least that's one saving grace. <laughs> I love the fact that he was. He, he could he could play a he could turn a dagger sideways, play a flute on it that sounded like a trumpet, with a mask on. With no moving lips. With or no, no moving care. lips. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That somehow that dude could do it. That is magic. That is magic. <laughs> Did you ever have that? Did you ever have that as a kid? The dragon dagger. And yeah, didn't? I had the dragon dagger. I had um, Saba, the name of the white sword. I had that as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. I remember the white. My cousin Shane had the white sword. Um, I had the I had the, the, the red gun that you folded to the the knife. It yep. had flip knife. I can't remember what it's called for the life of me. I think it's a, a power blast or summer. It's something weird like that. You can't, yeah, that's... yeah, I mean, you can't see this right now, but I've just reached into a drawer and I've just picked up the uh, communicator. <laughs> I still have that to this day. <laughs> it's, <laughs> this titanium thing, it's, it's the Green Rangers one. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember seeing them when they come out. Yeah, I, I, can't, believe you, I can't believe you bought that. <laughs> I grabbed it when Toys R Us was going under. They had several of them on the shelf. Um, really? Yeah, and just as Toys R Us was, it was the last day that we had, and they still had like seven of these things on the shelf. They never sold, and the guy was like, 20 quid." I was like, "Okay, <laughs> I'll take yeah. that." That thing was like fifty, sixty quid when it was full, full price. Yeah, I remember the legacy collection you know, ones. Do you know all our Toys R Us had? Yeah, Captain Boomerang from the Suicide Squad. <laughs> <laughs> that is all they had. They were just like, yeah, nobody wants Captain Boomerang. He's still in home bargains to this day. He is, and uh, every collect, like every of these like discount chains, they always have uh, Katana and um, and Boomer and Boomer. Yeah, they're the two they always have. It's just nobody wants them. I remember when the, the Harley and Deadshot and all that and Joker started coming through. People were snatching them up because they were cheap. Mm-hmm. And uh, but you never seen them again. It was just that one time and then they were gone. And then yeah, Boomerang and Katana just stayed forever. But um, <laughs> it's just it's just rubbish. So what um, what 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 we're kind of saying about Spin Master? Uh, it's just dawned on me that I think the Birds of Prey movie is going to be a twenty twenty release, right? I think. Yeah, yeah. So the Spin Master's first big movie tie-in is going to be Birds of Prey. Oh. So DC, because like the animated version of Hush comes out this year, so DC collectibles that. will probably deal with that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So we might get some figures out of that, maybe some re-releases of some Hush figures I'd like to see, but we'll see what happens with that. Yeah, I, I'm definitely... Uh, Jim, I've got on my on my right arm, it's all Jim Lee Hush artwork. Nice. Is, yeah, I'm a big... Hush was what brought me back to comics, because uh, when I was a young kid, I, I used to... I got confused as well, I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, I had Nightfall, if you remember the story, Batman yeah. getting his back broken. I had the Nightfall story. And in it was um, Tim Drake's Robin, classic Tim Drake suit, the one that basically they've used for Dick Grayson on the animated series show. Yep. And Night, a character Nightwing, I've never seen him before in my life except for in this book. And uh, he called him Dick and he called him Tim. And I thought the person had got the balloons the wrong way round mm-hmm. because I thought Dick Grayson was Robin. And especially looking in that same suit as he did from the cartoon. And I was really confused. It wasn't until I got older that I realised Robin graduates to Nightwing and Tim Drake then takes up the mantle once yep. Jason died. Yeah, and, and to tell me that as a kid, again, I, I guess I, I just don't like change. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, yeah, I, oh, I was a nightmare growing up. And then when Batman and Robin the movie come out and you see Robin wearing a Nightwing costume, well, that that just blew my little mind. <laughs> Because at the end of Batman Forever, he wears the really cool Robin outfit. And I'm like, oh, well, he's going to wear that in the next one, isn't he, surely? And he doesn't. He wears a red and blue Nightwing outfit. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, I hated it. <laughs> Absolutely hated it. Um, 
what's what's your feelings on um batman beyond then because it's it's something we don't really hear a lot from you about batman beyond it was never a, a cartoon that i watched i'm gonna be brutally honest no no that's cool um i've seen the animated movie where obviously joker returns and the old grizzled that, batman that's a that. great film yeah i've seen the animated movie i never watched the cartoon I'm not sure whether I was coming out of kind of Batman at that point in my childhood, whether I was moving on to light, like we said, more into the sort of wrestlers, the NECA figures of Alien and Predator are moving on maybe a little bit. It's an age thing because I was exactly yeah. there with you. It's only been now I'm older that I've actually sat and watched it all. Mm. Like now I'm 29 years old, I've actually sat and watched it. But when it was happening, I was like, I'm out. Like, mm. I don't get why Batman looks like this. And I remember seeing a trailer for it, and I was like, because again, the the young Terry McGinnis looks like a Robin. I'm like, why is Robin Batman? This looks rubbish. I'm not watching this. And yeah, I fell out of it. Yeah. Um, Justice League brought me back though. I don't know if you watched Justice League when it was coming out. Uh, the what the animated Justice League? Yeah, yeah. Brave and the Bold, or whatever it was called. Uh, Justice was League it? Unlimited. Unlimited. No, I see. Yeah. I never bothered with that. I I think I I think I left DC and Batman behind at that point. And wow. then the thing that brought me back was, um, as I got older, you know the the animated movies where they brought like Kevin Conroy back and they start and they started making the animated movies that were aimed at our generation that grew up with the animated series. That's when I got into it when they started releasing the home movies. That's when I got oh, yeah. back into it. So when they started doing like the the Superman Batman Public Enemies yep. and yeah all stuff like that. Yeah, the apocalyptic they do one. Do, and... Yeah, they do do good. Um, animated movies don't oh, they yeah. DC love the DC they're, animated they're, movies they're hitting on all cylinders <coughs> it's a shame they can't get their uh, <laughs> their act together for their films but yeah. um, Joaquin Phoenix Joker what what are we saying from what we've seen so far I'm, I'm not hating on it so far I think it looks alright If it's... I'm not hating on it but mm. I feel like he's going to be running a lot yeah I think he <laughs> I'm not I'd, I'm going to reserve judgment until we get the film I think but yeah, of course. But it's kind of like I don't know the the, the the trailer thing we watched so far. It it does look like he's gonna play quite a. Or what are we gonna say? Well, this is meant to be like early in the Joker's career, isn't it? So I mean, yeah, I think he's gonna be quite slapsticky Joker in this one. I'm I'm just I'm just worried though that all this change and DC's never gonna get their act together and make a no, universe like Marvel have done, because they've already got. I I hated Jared Leto as Joker. I straight up hated yeah. him. Um, I, I, and then to cast him so quickly as Joaquin Phoenix and do a, a, a Joker origin film or whatever it's going to be, and then obviously with the rumours of Ben, I love Ben Affleck as Batman. I don't think he's had a good enough run. No. I think he needs a solo film, yeah, which he's meant to, which he's meant to be getting um, next year. But now everyone's saying Batman will be recast by the end of two thousand nineteen, yeah, and someone else will be Batman and I, I think that's a shame because I think Ben could I said I said um, well it's longer than that now 16 years ago when I first watched Daredevil the movie I said Ben would be a really good Batman mm. and then 13 years later and it happened and I was like see told you told you but um, everyone else every, I don't like Christian Bale as Batman no though. I never yeah. liked Christian Bale I'm, 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 I'm with you with that I never liked the Christian Bale Batman don't get me wrong, I think Batman Begins and Dark Knight are really good films, really yeah. well done, but I don't like him as Batman. No. <laughs> I've never, I've, he's never been my Batman. Like, um, Heath Ledger as Joker was perfect casting. Yeah, and spot on. I even liked, um, I forgot the guy's name, but the guy who played Scarecrow. Um, uh, Cillian Murphy? Yes, Cillian Murphy. I liked, I liked him. He was kind of odd and he was perfect for that role. Yeah. He looks like Bloody I, Nightmares I, without the bloody mask on. Yeah, he is quite <laughs> creepy, but um, yeah, I I enjoyed Begins and Dark Knight. I thought they were both really well done films. I mm-hmm. really dug it. Um, I just Christian Bale was not a selling point to me. I, I I think he was best in Batman Begins because we had no choice but to follow the film through Bruce's eyes. Yeah. So we had no choice but to like him. But when it gets to the second and the third film, I'm just like, he's the boringest one to watch. Like yeah. whenever whenever Bruce Wayne's on scene, I'm just like, oh god, I, I hate him. Uh, there's something about there's something about Christian Bale I just don't I can't get on with. And it, we... it's not it's not just his ridiculous Batman voice either. <laughs> <laughs> Are you like me? Are you thinking that maybe DC the way 
they went wrong because they tried to chase Marvel, and they should have stuck with their individually released movies rather than trying to make a universe. I, I agree and disagree. I mm. think DC were in a corner regardless. Yeah. Had they tried and done solo movies, it would have been all the MCU fans saying, oh, they're just, they're just copying Marvel, they're just copying Marvel, and wouldn't have gave them a shot either yeah. way. Batman, the single movie, would have made money regardless. Mm. It's Batman. Batman will always make money for Warner Brothers, without a doubt. So, But it is trying to sell people on these other characters you know, your Green Lanterns, your, your Cyborgs, your Aquamans. Now, Aquaman and Wonder Woman have done very well. Mm -hmm. They've done extremely well money-wise and fan-wise. Um, so they will get sequels. Obviously, we know Wonder Woman's getting a sequel. It's coming out this year at some point. Um, but now, Bat uh, people like Batman, Superman and uh, Green Lantern, they're just sort of left out there in the wind. Do you know what I mean? I think DC's problem is they're trying to build a universe too quickly, yep. like you said. Why not take it from their TV shows? Why recast The Flash when we've had this kid playing The Flash for the past five years who's built up enough goodwill with everyone that yep. they're like, Grant, do you want to be in this film? Don't worry about your origin. We don't have to waste 20 minutes on your origin because people have got five years of your TV show they've been watching. Yeah. That's where they made their mistake. I would have, if I was the head of Warner Brothers or whatever, I would have been like, right, our TV and our movies are going to be smashed into one. Yep. Do you know what I mean? And that's what that's where I think DC have gone wrong. I think I think they've because there, there was too much confusion, especially with the Flash, where everyone's like, well, he's he's on TV, and you have to explain to people, no, it's the same character, it's just another guy's playing him. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that to me, that's where they went wrong. They should have really st stuck with their TV because they've been knocking it out of the park with their TV. Yeah. I mean, a show like Green Arrow that's lasted seven years, that wouldn't have happened ten years ago. Green Arrow would have been off the air after the second season. Mm -hmm. You look at shows like Heroes, what they do, three seasons and then they were pulled? Yeah. And that was ten years ago. So for them to last as long as they have, they've done well. They've done really well for themselves. See, I always thought um, that was the plan for the TV, was was the fact that obviously like Arrow and The Flash kind of did the TV thing and they were eventually going to meet up with the movie versions of uh, Justice League. In a, in a normal universe, that would have made sense. Yeah. It, take your B-list characters who nobody knows about and put them in a TV series. Mm -hmm. You look at Daredevil now, you look at Punisher, yeah, unfortunately Netflix has cut them all off now, but... They all are like considered B-list characters mm. in the Marvel scope of things now, but Daredevil's done really well on Netflix. You know, it's had three series. People are petitioning to get a fourth made. Uh, they brought the Defenders in. You know, they've they've done Luke, uh, Luke, oh, Cage, yeah. Luke Cage, Luke Cage, and they've done Iron Fist. Old Danny Rand, and yeah, Danny Rand and Iron Fist, obviously the same show. Um, is not that great, but they did it. And they is, you know, they could just easily throw them in an Avengers film and make them stars. Do you know what I mean? Marvel have had this really good thing where they've took, because when they first started the MCU, they had nothing. Yeah. They didn't have Spider Man. They didn't have X Men. They didn't have, you know, Fantastic Four or anything like that. That's why we got a Guardians of the Galaxy film. And look at that. That's become one of the most popular things. That you know, all the kids want a Groot Teddy and a. A rocket raccoon teddy do you know mm -hmm. what i mean like, <laughs> but then you that's because they were scraping bottle of the barrel now they own everything especially this upcoming year now they've got x-men and fantastic four in the in the the mix now yep marvel marvel's just gonna kill it they're gonna crush it dc dc don't stand a chance unless they do some <laughs> bold really well right man you know well Kind of on that note, I think we are uh, coming. This has gone on quite long now. I think this conversation and it's getting quite. Yeah, my apologies for my little rant now. I do apologise. <laughs> but um, I think we're going to definitely have to do a part two video of this to continue yes, our I'm... Batman conversation because I think we've got more to talk about. Definitely. Yes, I'm. Yeah, sorry, I'm really bad at digressing. I do apologise. <laughs> but I know you really are. Um, it's been a good talking to you, man. So, um, no. everyone watching, thank you very much for watching. That was Danny from Fat Pod. Please do check out Fat Pod. The link will be in the description. Please check him and his friend out. They do some awesome videos. Please check them out. Also, guys, I'll be doing another one of these podcasts. We'll probably meet up with Danny again in about another week's time or so. And we'll record a part two of this for you because this has been a good conversation. I've enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, we need to continue this back on top.
Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it, man. No worries, dude. Did you want? Uh, is there any? Did you say you had a final question you wanted to send me off with or something? Did you? Yes, I do have a final question. Go for it, man. To make this conversation even <laughs> longer. Um, out of the four original Batman movies, yeah. What one's your favourite and why? Um, definitely gonna have to say. Um, do you know what I'm gonna? It's Batman and Robin. It is Batman and Robin. Out of the four, it is. it's Batman and Robin. Because I think I was too... Back in the day, I was too young to appreciate the Val- the original Batman and Robin. Sorry, the original Batman and then Batman Returns. Um, yeah. Batman Forever, I I never got on with Jim Carrey in that movie. I thought that that, that was just so overplayed. And but then, See, Tommy Lee Jones is the worst thing for me yeah. in that film. Especially because then I was confused. Because even as a kid, I was like, well, hang on a minute. Harvey Dent is a... It, it, it was the guy from Star Wars a minute ago, and now it's this guy. What's going on there? Because yeah. they're meant to be all part of the same universe, then films. Yeah. So that always threw me as a kid. But Batman and Robin, um, as cheesy as it was, gave us. It was. It was. It was a campy movie that reminded me a lot of the old like Adam West style Batman, which I which got me into Batman in the first place. It was a film that wasn't afraid to to, to be a bit cheesy and not take itself too seriously and. Batman's a comic book, and I think they kind of managed to cap- capture like the old campy style of Batman in the comics. Didn't they just? <laughs> oh yeah, including the Bat card, the Bat credit card, best yes. thing ever. I want one. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> what about you? But, Which was your favourite? Uh, mine's eighty nine, mm-hmm. purely because um, it was one of the first ones I remember watching. And again, me being, uh, like I said earlier on in this chat, I can't deal with change. <laughs> so when Keaton does two of them and then Val Kilmer comes in and does the next and then George Clooney comes in and does the my little brain just couldn't take it. And it was like, nope, like Keaton is Batman, blah, blah, blah. But um, yeah, 89, purely because, again, I Joker's my favourite. Joker's my favourite character. Like he, When he's done well, he's done, he's done really well. I'll tell you what, what I would love to see... And I think we'll end on this bit. What I'd love to see, and they're never going to do it, but you know, I'd love to see if, um, Keaton return as the aged as the as the aging Batman, grizzled oh. as he is now. Bring yeah. back Danny DeVito. Bring back Jack Nicholson. Bring back Michelle Pfeiffer. Have them all as they are now, grizzled old versions of themselves, and then cast a young lad to play Batman Beyond. Oh. What I'd a movie! Just take all my money. Just exactly. Take all my money. That would I sell. Would, I would watch that a hundred times in the cinema. Uh-huh. Yeah. If oh they, no, I'm in. I'm in. I'm I in. think everybody would cash in on that because it'd, it'd be like it's nostalgic enough that you remember the films from your childhood and then they bring it to the new generation with a new Batman. I'm in. I don't like Tim Burton, but I'd watch that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm in. I'm in definitely. <laughs> Right, guys, thank you very much for watching. As always, I'm your host, Super Sorrel. That was Danny from Fat Pod. We'll do a part two of this, like I said. And I'll see you guys in the next video. May the force be with you. Bye.